What's up, guys? It's Colton Smith, and today we're back to talk about one of my favorite topics in financial machine learning, which is cross-validation techniques. First, we're going to look at why traditional k-fold cross-validation fails for financial applications. And then we're going to look at some of the work presented by Marcos Lopez de Prado in the book Advances in Financial Machine Learning, which includes purging, embargoing, and combinatorial backtest paths. If we take a look at the traditional k-fold cross-validation setup, if the data is generated from an IAD process, we would randomly shuffle the data into these various training and testing buckets and evaluate the model's performance across these splits to get a sense of how the model could perform in a truly out-of-sample setting. The problem that arises in financial applications is that there is serial correlation, which means the data that is very close together, say a day apart, can look very similar. Thus, we don't want to train and test data from the same time period. So we can adjust our k-fold cross-validation by retaining the order of the data. This could be month one, month two, and so on. In this case, the testing data is not from the same time period as the data that it was trained on. Now we will introduce purging to further improve the process. The idea behind purging is that we want to eliminate any data point who is used to construct labels for both the training and the testing set. So for example, if we're using a triple barrier label looking five days into the future, at the end of the training period, this data point is going to look five days ahead, and at the beginning of the testing period, it's also going to look five days ahead, but four of those days are going to overlap from the label that's generated for the last day of the training period. This is going to cause a leakage between the training and testing periods. So we want to eliminate all those data points which are using that overlapping data, both before the testing period and after the testing period. Next, we can introduce an embargo period which helps eliminate the serial correlation between the testing and training sets. An embargo period is done after a testing period to ensure that the end of the testing period doesn't look too much like the beginning of this training period. So we just add an additional buffer, it can be a percentage of the total training size, and that helps eliminate the leakage or serial correlation between these two sets. So now what this looks like altogether is this. So we have an overlapping period, which we purge and eliminate from the training set. And then we also have an embargo period, which we take off from the training set to help eliminate the serial correlation between these two. I was also curious where the idea of purging and embargoing came from. I did a little bit of searching and found some malicious statistics papers that began to introduce the idea. So in this case, we have one from 1994 where they introduce this idea called H-block cross-validation, which is very similar to the idea behind purging, and it's being used for dependent data. There is even a paper before this as well. And then we have this introduction of HV-block cross-validation, uh, which kind of is similar to the idea of adding also the embargo period. So it's really interesting to see where these ideas came from and how they developed over the years, and these, these are quite old as well. And these are so important for nowadays in financial applications as machine learning is becoming such a popular method that it's really important to prevent the, uh, the finding of false positives as much as possible. Now we're going to talk about combinatorial backtest paths. In the traditional setting, we may train on all of our data up to a certain year and test on the remainder time period. This gives a slight glimpse into how the model perform in a sample setting, but we can do better. We have these other testing periods, though they're being trained on data that's in the future. Hopefully we can stitch them together in such a way that can give an idea of how the model would perform in an out-of-sample period that extends the entire time period being looked at. And so that's the idea behind combinatorial uh, backtest paths. So we have these different pieces, we'll call them, uh, which could be the months. So we could have month one through six, and then we have these different ways that we can split this data into training and testing periods under the assumption that we want two, in this case, uh, periods given for the testing period. So we will train on, in split one's case on three, month three through six, and we'll test on months one and two. And of course, we're using purging and borrowing during all of these different splits. And from here, now we can generate five unique backtest paths that span this entire time period. And these are which is done by stitching these X's together. And so I wanted to regenerate this in Python so we can see a little bit of how uh, things change and we can play with it. 
So to just generate the same plot, we have once again the pieces or months on the left, and then these are the different possible splits into training and testing periods. And so these colors represent the different backtest paths that could be created. And so you can see that we can create five different backtest paths that span this entire time period using purely out of sample data. So this is pretty powerful because it can give us a lot a lot uh, more of an in-depth look at how this model would perform and give then ability to maybe average performance statistics across these different paths and uh, as well as look at how it affected in different time periods and it gives it a much more complete look than in the traditional case. So just also to see what happens when we say that we have enough data that we want to actually use 10 months or 10 years, whatever. Just to see how the different paths can get generated. So this is also in the, still assuming the case that we want to keep two uh, for the testing period. So now uh, we still have we now we have ten pieces or ten months years, and we have way more possible splits. And so this is just a combination. And now we can also generate way more backtest paths. So now each of these colors once again represent uh, unique backtest paths that can be created. You can see the power of this and the ability to really uh, understand how the model would perform in a more realistic setting. Finally, we can see how purging and embargoing uh, fits into all these different splits. So once again, the purging's idea was to eliminate the periods of overlap that is used when generating signals. So we have these prediction time and evaluation time. And so our purging method ensures that that period of overlap is eliminated. And then we have the embargo portion uh, just as an arbitrary number of days or a, a set number, a set percentage of the sample size that you want to eliminate also as well and push that training period back. When we do that, uh, we can generate what the all these different splits actually look like when you're being trained and tested. And so here they are. So we have all of our different splits and uh, this is what we would use for these testing periods to generate those back test paths. And we can see these how these different gaps actually look in the, the grand scheme here. And so we can see before a testing period, after a training period, we have a purging period. So right here, this was eliminated by our uh, purging embargo function. And after a testing period, we have uh, a purging period. Also, though, we have an embargoing period. And so the embargo period is larger than our purging period. And so in these cases, you can see that on the end of a testing set, there'll be a larger gap than before the beginning of a testing set. And this is just showing kind of uh, the difference in flexibility in, in choosing the embargo period. I could have made this larger uh, or smaller, but uh, you can for sure see now how all these different paths can be generated. And so it shows that it's very consistent across. Um, and the, then the, the performance that we're evaluating when we get to actually look at these different backtest paths is, is very robust. And the performance metrics and the analysis that we can do from there can ensure that these models uh, are not simply just being overfit and that we can hopefully find true positives and solid investment strategies to, to further pursue. So this hopefully gave you a good insight into the complexities around the different validation techniques and some of the work presented by Marcos Lopez de Prado in the fabulous book uh, Advances in Financial Machine Learning, uh, which introduced these ideas of purge and embargoing as well as the combinatorial backtest paths. And so this is a, a really powerful technique to just Im drastically improve the, the traditional K-fold approach and really give you a better sense of how the model could perform in a real-life setting. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please drop a comment below and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.